find out the best open source LLM for querying SQL database in natural language. In a previous video, we went over the results at a high level. Today, we go over the code and also look at uh, some of the example queries and the insights. Okay, so here we have a number of open source LLMs and on the right, the percentage of questions the LLM got correct, right? For example, if we ask 100 questions in natural language, Mr. Limo, it got 65% of them correctly, okay? Whereas this Lava model, it got only 10 of them correct, okay? Um, so, I'm using Olama, and here I have some 21 LLMs out of which three are related to embeddings. Uh, the remaining 18, uh, in terms of size, I have three, uh, let's say, different sizes of LLMs. Most of them are 7 billion a parameter, the standard LLMs, like Mistral, uh, uh, Llama, Llama 3.1, uh, uh, so and so forth, right? And then I have two large models of uh, parameters 16 and 12 billion, DeepSeq Coder and Mistral uh, Nemo, the latest release, okay? And then I have two very small models, uh, like 5.3 here, as you can see, it's only 2.2 GB. It's, I believe, uh, maybe 3 billion parameters, okay? And then I have this stable code, which is also small in size. All right. Now, coming to the purpose of these models, uh, nine of those models are uh, general purpose models, whereas uh, nine models are uh, focused on generating the code, okay? So to test uh, these experiments, I have set up uh, a Postgres uh, SQL database uh, with this Chinook data, okay? All right. So the database, uh, it consists of this artist albums, uh, the customers, uh, the invoices, etc. Uh, it has, I believe, 11 tables and uh, uh, about uh, 60, uh, 60 to 70 columns, okay? Now you can download this database uh, from, from the internet and uh, ingest into your database, okay? And then I have prepared some 24 questions, okay? So these are manually created and here I have the query and uh, the results from the database are the ground truth, okay? Uh, we are going to compare uh, the actual results with the LLM generated results to find out which LLMs gives the best results, okay? All right, so I have designed questions uh, such a way uh, that the final response is a number so that the comparison becomes uh, easier, okay? So here are the questions. Uh, try to cover the most commonly used commands of uh, SQL, uh, having group by where, count, distinct, uh, so and so forth, okay? So we are going to test 18 LLMs, uh, 24 questions, and because of the stochastic nature of LLMs, uh, they generate uh, they can generate a different response uh, uh, each time we run, right? So we are going to repeat the process five times and then take the average when computing the performance, okay? So total, <clears throat> we have generated uh, 2160 uh, SQL queries and the response from them uh, we compared against the ground truth uh, to measure the uh, performance. <coughs> All right. So <coughs> the code is very simple. Uh, we are going to use uh, uh, the default <coughs> SQL agent from uh, Llama index. Okay. All right. So we will be mainly using uh, this natural language SQL uh, uh, table query gen and then to connect to it I uh, will use this uh, SQL database and for the LLMs we will be using Olama okay so these are my local database credentials and then uh, we connect to the engine using this create engine uh, that's a uh, SQL alchemy command and then uh, coming to Llama index 
So first we connect our database uh, and then from the connection uh, by supplying the LLM, we create this query engine. Okay, so this is the natural language SQL table query engine. Okay, so by providing the SQL database, uh, we are also providing uh, the schema of the database. Okay, and then we have the LLM. So invoking is super easy. Uh, we just call this query engine dot query. So here I have a question: How many customers do we have? Okay, and then invoke. Uh, so here is the response. This is how it looks like. Uh, it contain three pieces of uh, information uh, we are interested in. So the first one, uh, in the metadata, we have the SQL query as well as uh, the result of the SQL query executed on the database. Okay. So for example, it generated this SQL query, select count star from customers. Okay. For this question, it looks right. And then uh, this is the response from the database, okay, when we execute the query. So it's 59 uh, customers. Now, but the LLM, once it receives the response from the database, it synthesizes into a human readable form. So if you look at this response, uh, response uh, this is the final response we get uh, from the query engine. Okay, so it says, okay, based on the query results, I can synthesize the response and we have 59 customers. Okay, so that's the more uh, natural or human readable uh, response. Okay, so we are just going to execute this on all our questions using all our LLMs. All right, so these are the nine general purpose LLMs, nine code purpose LLMs. Uh, and so we have total 18 LLMs. As I mentioned, we are interested in these three pieces of information, right? So the actual SQL query itself, the response when we execute the query on the database and also uh, the final human readable response, okay? So just initialized uh, three pandas data frames, okay? And uh, so we have a column query that's how we are going to identify uh, all the results and then it's very simple we are going over all the models okay all the 18 models and for each query so we are going over all the 24 queries we invoke the query engine okay so we get the response now sometimes uh, it gets timed out so we don't get any response from the LLM or sometimes because this is a two-step process right so when uh, within this uh, one uh, there are two steps involved our question in natural language the SQL agent it generate the corresponding SQL query in step number one and in step number two it take that query and execute on the database now sometimes what happens is the generated query, it has these extra quotation marks or some uh, text uh, embedded in it, etc. Right. So when we run that query on the database, obviously we get a uh, syntax uh, error type of thing. Right. So in such a case also, we will not get any response. So that's why uh, I'm using this try catch. So if the response contain the metadata, and the final response we take that so we take the sql query we take the query result and also the llm results uh, otherwise uh, we fill with a uh, none okay so we run over all the llms over all the questions uh, we collect uh, uh, the results okay we repeat this experiment five times and this is what uh, i have uh, at the end okay so for example queries right so from the five experiments here i have all the queries each time and then SQL query results. So if you look at one of the files, uh, let me look at maybe the results first. All right. So these are the questions, 24 questions. And then from each model, uh, here we see uh, the responses. Now, as I mentioned, all these questions are designed such that the final response is a single number. But one common pattern I have observed is uh, something like this okay so if you look at like this instead of a single number here we have 
these three numbers right uh, like this and then as you can see from here also you like this so the actual response uh, the correct answer is supposed to be 84 uh, as you can see here we have some 84 single digits we'll see the query and uh, 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 in a minute okay now uh, that's the major pattern I observed uh, so let's actually look at uh, the results so if you look at the queries file uh, this is how it looks like again for each question uh, we have the generated SQL query uh, from all our uh, 18 uh, LLMs okay so I'll go to the details. all right so let's take this simple question uh, how many artists have more than 10 albums okay it's a very simple query now this is my SQL query I mean uh, the manually written one I simply have so we have artist ID from album where the artist ID has a count of more than 10 and since we are only interested in the count uh, we just do the count to get the final response so if I run this query so there are three artists who have more than 10 albums now the Mr. Lemo this is the query generated uh, which gave the right response three okay even though we don't need this extra as sub query but that's a very minor thing right it's exactly the same query generated but as i mentioned one very common pattern i observed across all the llms is this so if we run the response from or uh, the query generated by llama 3.1 this is what the response is now what is happening here is so it figured out there are three artists who have more than 10 albums and for each artist it is returning how many albums they have okay so the query is in the right path but not exactly what we asked for so uh, also as you can see uh, there is no need for uh, the joints we don't need the artist table uh, because the album table already has the artist id and since we are only interested in the number of artists we don't need to do any joins but the llm or the llama 3 uh, made it a bit uh, harder right so it did this part correct so it looked at uh, which artist have more than 10 albums and then instead of simply doing that count so it is finding out for each artist how many albums they have okay now if you look at the response from llama 3 somewhat similar but instead of again doing the count it is just finding who has a, a sort of more than these 10 albums right so if you look at this count distinct this count should have been appeared should have been applied on the result of the rest of the query right instead uh, it applied on each row so we have this one 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 okay so as i mentioned that i observed it across all the llms right so for example here uh, so here you will see and wherever you see multiple values instead of a single value it's either one of these uh, two problems okay and another one i think llms uh, they still need to work out on the uh, uh, the units part a bit so here i have asked a very simple question uh, where is it number of seconds i think yeah so what is the total number of seconds for all the tracks right so these responses those are in milliseconds uh, because the database also has uh, in milliseconds right so they did not convert this milliseconds into seconds uh, but as i said the major issue is uh, doing the aggregation uh, instead of uh, counting each row uh, separately okay all right i'll share all the results file uh, uh, to my uh, github account um, so you can uh, spend as much time as you want as uh, to find out uh, more interesting patterns uh, where the LLMs are working well not working well etc okay all right going back to uh, 
the final results again the takeaways the mr limo it outperformed well uh, by significant margin uh, compared to all other models uh, but again this one is a 12 billion parameter model whereas uh, the rest of the models are either 7 billion or even smaller okay uh, lama 3 performed better than lama 3.1 and interestingly 53 also performed better than lama 3.1 uh, so uh, this one uh, is a much smaller model just uh, 3 billion parameters now again the generic purpose models uh, except the code lama of course uh, performed much better uh, compared to these code specific models okay now i have m1 uh, with 16 gig ram Uh, so no issue running the seven billion parameter models, uh, but when I ran deep seek coder, uh, the, my system froze. Uh, so it did not let me do anything else. Uh, it's a sixteen billion parameter, as you can see. The model size itself is nine uh, GB. Uh, running Mr. Limo is also a bit challenging. Uh, uh, the system has become too slow. Uh, this is a twelve billion parameter. So one reason why Mr. Limo outperformed all other models uh, can be attributed to uh, its extra uh, size. Um, all right, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you very much.